Lesson 2.6, special functions. So what other type of functions can we uh, end up with out there? Um, two of the classics are uh, what we call exponential, things that rapidly grow, and logarithmic, things that decay over time. And we're going to get to those. Uh, but for now, we'll do some of the simpler ones. Uh, to understand, but at the same time, can be very challenging to graph. So the first one is the constant function, and we'll pick one. Y equals a 9, let's just say. And that just means no matter what you put in, you always get out 9. Kind of like talking to a police officer or something like that. No matter what you say to them, they're pretty much just going to say, here's the ticket, leave me alone. We also have the identity function. If I put in 2, I get out 2. If I put in negative 4, I get out negative 4. So that's the graph of y equals x. And the last one is the absolute value function. When you put this in your calculator, you'll actually use the ABS function. It looks uh, something like this. I'm not going to actually graph things on your calculator, but you should. You should play with them. It's a handy tool, that sort of thing. And it looks like a V, which makes sense. If y equals x on this side and y equals negative x on that side, when we did absolute values, we talked about how you either have the regular case or the negative of the case. So two other functions are called the greatest integer function and a piecewise function. Greatest integer looks like this. Piecewise I'm not going to write equation for. We're going to spend most of our time on that. And GIF stands for again greatest integer function. So we will see it in the calculator like this. Again, you should graph it and look at the table and see what happens. Because the greatest integer function can be confusing. It's no fractions, no decimals allowed. So when you are between 0 and 1, you go to 0. When you are between 1 and 2, you stay at 1. When you are between 2 and 3, you stay at 2, and so on and so on down the other way. This is like uh, school buses. I get 70 kids and I can put 20 on a bus. I don't get three and a half buses. I get four buses. So one kid, two kid, three kid, four kid, all the way up to 20 kids, I have one bus. Once I get to 21, 22, 23, then I need two buses all the way up to 40. Similar thing with some cell phone bills where you have one rate, and then once you jump, you get immediately hit with a, a massive charge while you use the phone as much as you want or the Internet data pack. So things to watch out for when you're using your cell phone. A piecewise function will look something like this. Could have curves, could have straight lines, could have horizontal lines. It's just a big chunk of a graph with another big chunk of a graph with another. Could have 5, 10, 500, could have 2. But it's a piecewise function because it does not apply across everything with one single function. It's a piece of this and a piece of that. The only way to really learn how to do piecewise functions is to graph them. This is extremely challenging, so I'll do three different examples. The first one is relatively simple. So we set up our coordinate plane. And this is what we're graphing. This is where we're graphing it. And it's a little weird because you're working with a y equals and then suddenly it's just an x. X means left and right here. Where are we going? I'll show you that in a moment. 
I like to put a dotted line in any of these values, so this is zero. And that just reminds me I'm going to be graphing on either side of those. Y equals negative X looks something like this. But according to this piece here, I'm only taking the part that's less than zero. This is the less than zero direction on the left side of the y-axis. So I get rid of the other side. I cheat. I have that nice little handy tablet which erases the whole line at the same time. But that's the way to do it. And at the end, always goes a dot. If there's an equals to it, we'd fill in the dot. But in this case, there's not. So we will not fill in the dot. Now we grab, graph the other piece. That's y equals x. And it says we only want the part that's greater than or equal to zero. So we don't take that. We just do the greater than or equal. It's the greater than or equal, so we fill in a dot. In this case, we have an open dot over a closed dot. And that's totally fine. Very confusing. Let's try it a couple more times. I'm going to just do this. And I'll talk a little bit through it, but if I were you, I'd pause it and see if you can do it yourself. So here's the number I am looking to make a data line at, 2. And I'm going to graph y equals x minus 4. Four down, one up, one over. Then I'll look at this and say x is less than 2. So get rid of the part on the other side. Give it a dot. And don't fill in the dot. This is y equals 1. That's up here. And it says that if x is greater than or equal to 2. So we want the right part, and we want to fill it in. Complex stuff, you've been warned. Definitely watch this several times. Try it on your own. Erase it all and try it again. See if you can recreate it and how you did it. Last one's a fairly challenging one. Again, I'd pause it. Try it yourself, because I'm just going to do it. y equals negative 1, y equals x, y equals negative x plus 1. I'm not in the mood to put these in, so I'm just going to look at it. Negative 2. I want y equals negative 1. This is y equals negative 1 going to the left from negative 2. It's got a less than or equal, so I will fill it in. From negative 2 to 2, I have y equals x. So that starts at about here, and goes up to about here, and that's y equals x. Neither of them are filled in because we don't have the equal signs there. Negative x plus 1 starts here, goes down 1 over 1, down, down 1 over 1. Looks like it'll start right about here, down 1 over 1, go to about there. And that's x is greater than or equal to 2, so I'll fill in the dot. If it helps and you want to put in your dotted lines, by all means. I know it helps a lot when you're graphing early. That's it. Lots of practice. Erase it, do it again from scratch, figure it out. Good luck.